Alright guys, Tactical Bear back again today, I hope you enjoyed your day so far and today we're going to talk about a pretty spicy bit of news between Waskin and the rest of the Paris Legion guys that are rumoured to be on that team right now. Scraps, Goonjar, Aqua and Fire was the four man rumour team we looked at yesterday and Waskin was very frustrated as we're going to look at on Twitter here that um, well he hasn't been picked up on this team in addition to Scraps and well Rated was saying how it's kind of fraudulent that Theory, supposedly the coach over there, is picking up Goonjar, his old mate, as opposed to a guy like Waskin who dominated the Pro League at least with the sniper rifle and was a pretty solid assault rifle as well throughout the entire season. So, intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Waskin not particularly happy about this one. Probably this kind of um, Twitter stuff doesn't necessarily help him get a spot, but you know, we'll just have to see how things go. It's a tough environment with only 12 teams now in a 4 versus 4 situation. I certainly hope he stays around the amateur scene and the challenger side if he doesn't manage to get a spot here on the Paris Legion just so that, um, well, when everything kicks up next year, hopefully to 16 teams, it's very likely he'll get back on a starting lineup. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Luckily, if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe. If you are you as always i'd greatly appreciate it when he helps out the channel thank you very much for doing that so as this report came out yesterday aqua so formerly of the los angeles grillers last season been a very solid player frankly in track games in the past i think it's a well definitely fair play that he gets picked up here fire a very talented north american challengers player scraps of course from the european region did very well last season on the london royal ravens and then you've got Goonja, right to opt to gaming substitute from the call of duty modern warfare season kind of an interesting uh, pickup and a lot of people were speculating that, that is probably because of his existing relationships with Theory who is supposedly going to be the coach for the Paris Legion but as of recording this video nothing has yet been confirmed however Goonjar does do a couple of tweets yesterday saying look this is so relatable he also um yeah he does this tweet saying today sucks hopefully tomorrow is better maybe implying that this um fell through for whatever reason and uh, well didn't end up happening in the way that he planned it out to so things could certainly and may have certainly changed with what the Paris Legion are thinking here over the last 24 hours or so and this is what Waskin comes out and says as a result when all of this does come out to the public the disrespect man wow i don't know what to say kind of echoing um you know echoing rated comments yesterday about how like you know it's pretty disrespectful for you know the teams that go down this route when they could get a guy like waskin or whatever waskin and scraps seems like a duo that you want to have but as waskin's going to explain exactly why he feels like this team didn't decide to get waskin and scraps because it almost makes perfect sense right you have aqua you can maybe run a flex maybe an assault rifle right now it seems to be an ar heavy game anyway so you can probably just have like two main ars you could almost argue then again this game does doesn't quite play as slow as like a game like World War II maybe did, so it's maybe more difficult to get away with. But you know, Waskin, Scraps, Aqua, Fire, it might be a team that works, I don't really know. And uh, well, certainly it almost would make sense to have Waskin and Scraps together as a duo on their team, as they've pretty much been their entire career. But we're going to look at in a second here exactly why that isn't necessarily the case from Waskin's perspective. He then comes out with this. Some little plumber, so just kind of like a soft derogatory term, I guess, went to the ownership of certain franchise, so I imagine Paris Legion, and told them that me and Scraps didn't work well together. I think I know who that would be, but at this point I'm stuck. I will be back. So, um, you know, kind of following up from what he said a few months ago we had the whole assault drama that we're going to look at here in just a second and as Jake Lucky says how does the ownership choose to listen to that said opinion given the history right of Waskin and Scraps doing well together in the past and um, well I spoke to the owner about two weeks ago I imagine of the Paris Legion and he was talking about making it happen then this just come to me I don't even know what is going on anymore so once again like Paris Legion just all over the place talking to all sorts of pro players saying it's going to happen then it just falls through at the last minute kind of crazy stuff so wanted to bring it back to this that happened back in September September now. So Assault was kind of talking on the Reddit that, um, you know, as you can see right here, there's a reason they are off London and don't have offers. They don't take their job serious and chalked scrims to play Warzone all the time and only care about how good they play. Again, there is reasons they do not have offers. So, well, Waskin comes out and says, look, bro, before you make assumptions like that, dig at me and ask me. We never had a choice in the Warzone tournaments by one and it was with Tifu. Don't say I didn't care when I was the only one who cared. This guy cannot be serious. So it's kind of interesting to consider how he felt that a few months ago here with a Salt coming into play and these kind of rumours that are going around the season as he describes it. Dirt on my name just for putting in more time than anyone else. It's crazy. That rumour has probably cost me a starting spot. The fact that he doesn't care or whatever. And um, yeah, now he's coming out that this other rumour that him and Scraps don't work well together is now costing him a spot on the team because the ownership group just wants to have one or the other and maybe would prefer to have Scraps because they already have Aqua potentially being their main assault rifle in addition to Gujo on the team. Who really knows? It's a really interesting one and it's difficult to figure out exactly who he thinks 
thinks it might be, right? He talks about this guy going to the Paris Legion ownership group and saying that they don't work well together to, you know, maybe get their teammate or get their friend or something a spot on the team instead of Wask. And it's really difficult to figure out. I can't imagine that there would be any reason for Assault to go to the Paris Legion and say, okay, look, these guys don't work well together or whatever. Given he's already locked up nicely on a team on Los Angeles Grillers, why would he really care what, um, what the other teams are up to, right? Even given this stuff that happened a couple of months ago. And as Waskin says again in, uh, on the 9th of September, people really just hate me and my bro about we didn't care. I just built a franchise while streaming all year. This guy doesn't know anything, let me tell you. So um, yeah, pretty frustrated, of course, and understandably so. And Assault does come back at the time. If that's true, what should you speak to then? Because that's not the same story anyone who knows about it has heard. Basically just saying that Waskin's wrong. Anyone who knows about your situation knows that that's not the case. And maybe there's someone else behind the scenes like talking to the Paris Legion about stuff and trying to get something, uh, well, trying to get it to the point where Waskin and Scraps don't team together next season. Really interesting one and, you know, Waskin does follow up with. At this point, I might as well give Procon a knock on the head. How can I end up here after Modern Warfare? I wasn't exactly the worst player, but yeah, I cannot win. Gotta take my talents over to Twitch. You know, well, Ascenta says, you placed fourth at COD Champs just because of politics and downsizing. You got screwed over. Just go into EU Challenges and dominate it and your spot will be awaiting you in 10 months. And I certainly hope that Waskin does stay around the scene. He'll be streaming no matter what regardless. I wouldn't be worried too much. And the Scraps then says, Waskin, um, yeah, I'll see you soon. I'll see you again at Scrappy. If you ever need a main, you know where to find me. Also, tell the owner them rumours are not good enough. So, um, yeah, saying how the rumours have really cost him this spot here, which is, like, well, kind of remarkable to see. And it's certainly interesting to ask, like, where these rumours exactly came from, right? Given the fact that they're not teaming together on London next season, it seems like the more obvious route for London to take to keep Scraps and Wask in the biggest names, the biggest brands on their team and fill out the roster with the rest of the guys the way they wanted to, right? Maybe with a guy like Dylan Codds, maybe with a guy like Alex, and then, um, yeah, Shawnee and Zero maybe go their separate ways. They decided to go a different direction, getting rid of Scraps and Waskin, and that kind of um, implies that maybe there is something to this, or maybe they just decided to go a completely different direction for whatever reason, and now um, these kind of rumours coming out behind the scenes, getting talked to to the Paris Legion ownership group, apparently, that they're, well, supposedly taking as fact, um, is now costing these guys, or at least Waskin, a spot alongside his brother Scrap. So, really interesting interesting stuff and as Waskin says look the word on the street is me and my bro don't work well together I cannot believe I'm even dealing with this but yeah that is why I'm not on the roster if there wasn't for this rumor I would certainly be there is what he's getting at it's pretty remarkable stuff and just to finish off the video I thought this was entertaining so yesterday Golden Joysticks came out with their kind of esports awards of the year Every one of their auntie, right, is doing these esports awards this time around. But anyway, they give the esports game of the year, goes to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, baby, with its new maps and modes. 2019's release saw Modern Warfare at its best. Congrats to Infinity Ward and Activision, hashtag golden joystick. So, pretty entertaining. I don't really know how they came up with this. I think, like, League of Legends, Valorant, like, Counter-Strike, and the Dota, maybe, were all games up for nomination. But it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare, they get away with it. Not really sure how they decided this. Did they just look at how well Warzone did? that they just look at how well, like, um, I suppose the casual community enjoyed this game and decided it must be the esports game of the year. Doesn't quite work like that, and um, I do kind of find it pretty entertaining how the Call of Duty competitive community has high standards for what we expect out of a Call of Duty game from the competitive side, to the point where, like, even when our game actually wins an award, we're, we're all, like, all over the timeline being like, okay, yeah, we didn't deserve it, the game is awful, all this kind of stuff. There's probably no other esport that would like that, but, um, yeah, we do have high standards here in the professional Call of Duty community. A pretty funny tweet here from Cogatepedia with the old formal meme looking over at this award thinking, okay, like, how does that exactly work out? But I thought it was pretty entertaining regardless. And I'll just finish off with this nice little clip from Scump here over on this uh, Checkmate gaming map. Pretty interesting to see how the AK-74U is coming more into the meta lately. Certainly something I probably need to be trying out because it was definitely the meta in the alpha. It kind of quickly went out of the meta in favor of the MB5 and now it's an AR dominated map. But certainly in some situations, the AK-74U does seem to be the way to go. And Scump uses it to good effect in this clip. Very much interesting to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on all the stuff we've discussed today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm know you enjoy this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well and help grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care and I will see you next time. Got season playing on me. Ed, one more. Doug's one nice. shot on me. Doug's one shot. He went out left lane. Play with you. Pushing our left, dead. Nice. Bomb dead. I'm, nice. dead. I'm one shot. Please. Uh, last guy, last guy, Pat. Could be already on bomb in a corner. Not on bomb? No, he's in here. In here. It, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he hopped out. He hopped out. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go!
Sorry, Yeah, one shot, Pav. You're our last operator. Pav's there too, mate. Same place. Right, hey. Yeah. On me you're built. You're built for these. Bomb online. Stunned. Last guy planted, I think. Only one hostile remains. Over in the wing. 